I've been spending time in the woods ever since I was a kid, hunting, fishing, hiking, and I've always wanted to find out more about things. There's a red-breasted sapsucker in the woods up ahead, and I want to find out a little bit more about them. These birds drill rows of small wells on trees. They feed on the sap and small insects that get trapped there. But what I didn't know is that these sap wells are important food sources for other birds, including hummingbirds. Well, I've just learned something new about birds on the Tongass National Forest. These days, researchers are learning new things as well, but they're taking a decidedly more scientific approach. The muskegs around here, they have a lot of organic acids and fulvic and humic acids because of all the peat. And so these are very low pH waters, which means they're very acidic. And they're running off these muskegs into the karst lands and caves are forming. And then downstream, you measure the water there and the pH has gone up, so it's been buffered. So I'm interested in the chemistry between these two places. We're definitely interested in tagging some fish. That's what we got this all set up for. And we're waiting for them to come in. And it's not too big of a surprise that they haven't come in yet with the water temperatures being so cold. We count sockeye, we count coho, chum, and pinks through the weir at least three or four times a day. All that data goes to, to fish and game. And so they can get an accumulative number of how many fish are returning every year. Well, we're coming out to pretty much assess the feasibility of the sale, mainly measuring or determining the amount of trees in a certain stand and the quality. Four is 18.7. The Tongass offers plenty of room for research. It's the country's largest national forest. In some regards, it's also one of the nation's most controversial because of its history of large-scale logging. Today, as in the past, management of the forest affects the plants and animals. To help ensure the forest remains a healthy functioning ecosystem, researchers study many details of this complex temperate rainforest. One research project involves an animal that few have ever even seen. It's a furry animal that looks a lot larger than it is because it's, its fur is fairly dense and, and fluffy. I guess the first time I saw it, the, the thing that came to mind was watching a Batman movie, and you know how you see the bat and Batman flying over the sky? It looks just like that. It has very large eyes because it's nocturnal. It, it moves around mostly at night. This research subject is a small animal that plays a big role in the Tongass National Forest, the northern flying squirrel. There are very few people that are even aware that we have northern flying squirrels in southeast Alaska. But when I take a few minutes to explain the importance of the role of this species in forest communities, they realize that understanding the ecology of this species is important for understanding what's going on in the Tongass. Dr. Winston Smith has been studying flying squirrels in the Tongass for years. He's a research wildlife biologist with the Forest Service's Forestry Sciences Lab. Although based in Juneau, Smith also conducts field work with his flying squirrel research team on Prince of Wales Island. There are just not that many predators, you know, to, uh, in terms of that would be preying on, on northern flying squirrels. Mm -hmm. The flying squirrel's favored habitat is old growth forest. One reason they're important to the ecosystem is that they eat fungi and spread spores throughout the forest. These fungi, in turn, improve the ability of tree roots to absorb nutrients and water. The flying squirrel plays another important role. It's an indicator species by which we judge the success of old growth reserves. This old growth reserve system is a key component of the Tongass National Forest's wildlife conservation strategy. The assumption is, is that if flying squirrels are able to function okay in these old growth reserves, all of the other wildlife that operate at similar ecological scales or spatial scales are also able to. So the flying squirrel has been selected to represent an entire community of wildlife that use habitat at the same spatial scale. So that's really, to me, the most significant part of the work that we're doing. The field work begins each morning. 
first task, checking each of the six debated traps and collecting any captured flying squirrels. Oh, the door's shut. Maybe we got one, Aaron. Okay. Oh, I see oh yeah. Right. Yeah, we got one. Oh, great. See if we can't get this guy to come out. Okay. It's coming loose there. Throughout the morning, the field team checks each trap and replaces the bait if necessary. The captured squirrels are taken to a central point for data collection. Hair samples are taken, blood is drawn to get DNA for genetic marking, small radios are attached to the males, and basic information is gathered. All the while, the squirrels are kept hydrated. She's, she's got the hang of it now. Yeah. One more. So how much does it weigh? 220 grams. 200 grams and it was female. Um, age? She's uh, pretty young, I'd say two. Yeah. Two, yeah. really estrus. Great. Okay, great. You mark the animal. Yep. This is the patagia of the squirrel. As soon as it jumps from a tree, it spreads its hind and fore limbs, and this catches the air like a kite. And they can maneuver through the forest canopy using their tail as a rudder. And then just before they land, they drop their tail, and their body banks up, and then they usually land really successfully. After the data is collected, the squirrels are released they usually run to a nearby tree. The researchers spend afternoons and sometimes evenings tracking the squirrels by the attached radios. Yeah, it might be in this snag. Eventually, the squirrel and den are located. Then the researchers gather habitat features such as den height, tree height, and tree diameter. Winston Smith estimates there could be as many as a few hundred thousand flying squirrels in the Tongass. Although infrequently seen, increased knowledge of their habitat needs is helping land managers make important decisions. I would like to think that when we're all done with this, that we will have provided not only the Forest Service and the Tongass National Forest, but the people of Southeast Alaska with the science that they need to make the policy decisions to do the best things that we need to do to make sure that these forests are managed in a sustainable way. Flying squirrels aren't the largest or most famous of the residents of the rainforest, but research is showing us just how important this animal is to the ecosystem. Research is helping us be better managers of the forest, not only for people, but also for the trees, the animals, and the fish that call this place home. For the Tongass National Forest, I'm Pete Griffin. Mm -hmm.